the uh, Guam Election Commission. The, the main person in charge, Maria Pangolinan, is literally sitting right here next to me. We're going to get to her in just a moment, but we want to tell you how the election is shaping up. For those of you interested in the upcoming election, this is very, very exciting times. Remember, the deadline to file is 5 p.m. today. So this is what we can expect, and the early bird gets the worm, as they say. So here who has filed thus far. Running for the governor and lieutenant governor on the Democratic ticket, you, of course, have the incumbent team, Lou Leon Guerrero and Josh Tenorio, the all in team. Also, having filed Mike Sinicholas, the aforementioned current congressman, he's still in the live stream right now, going on about an hour. Once again, Nestor Lacanto is going to join me later on in the show to talk about that. His running mate, former journalist Sabrina Salas Matanani, they have filed. Running unopposed on the Republican side of the ticket, the team of former Governor Felix Camacho and current Senator Tony Adda. Now, let's move on to the upcoming senatorial race. Always very, very. Uh, very contentious. 15 seats up for grabs and vying for these seats in the forthcoming 37th legislature. Starting with the Democrats, we have Pito Terlahi. He, of course, is an in incumbent. Dwayne T. Sinicholas is also running, as well as former police chief Fred Berdalio Jr. Joe Sinagasin, of course, he is in charge of a lot of the financial side. He has oversight of that. Uh, those matters of government, Senator Sinagasin seeking re-election. Jonathan Savaris is also running. He has filed, as well as incumbent Sabina Perez. She, of course, has oversight of EPA, among other things. Tina Rose Munya Barnes, the former vice speaker of the legislature, she is seeking re-election. She has uh, gotten all of her paperwork in. Franklin Menno has run before. He is seeking uh, election, as is John Aninich II. He has previously run. He is running once again, seeking your endorsement and as a senatorial candidate. David Duenas is also running. Speaking of incumbents, Amanda Shelton. She's been in various uh, leadership positions in the current legislature, and she seeks to reclaim her seat in the next legislature. Will Parkinson has uh, been in the headlines many times. He serves on many boards and is very, very active in the community. He is running uh, for senator. Uh, looking at the Republicans, Dr. Kelly Marsh Titano hopes to return to the legislature. You know, she just narrowly missed out on the last election. Roy Canata is running, as well as Alexander M. Duenas. Armando Dominguez hopes to secure your endorsement for a vote, as well as Sarah Thomas Netadog, of course, a longtime uh, director of Sanctuary Incorporated. She has most recently been involved during the uh, pandemic era, being in charge of the, uh, the organization dealing with homelessness and seeking to remedy that situation in our island. And yes, it is true. Chris Malafunction Barnett, our former colleague here, his first name is Daryl, if you did not know that, but Malafunction has indicated that he will be running, depending on how you look at it, if you follow him on Instagram, maybe the worst kept secret on Guam, but Chris Barnett has put his paperwork in to run for public office. Harvey Egna was one of the first candidates to get his paperwork in. He will be running for a senator on the Republican side. Incumbent Tello Tidegui hopes to return for Maria, I believe this would be a fourth term? Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Sandra Regis Seau, she is, this will be your second time running for uh, the legislature. She is running again. Tom Fisher, yes, the attorney, Tom Fisher, he is hoping to make it into as one of the 15 who will serve in the 37th legislature. He is running, I believe this would be the very first time for Tom. Uh, Ken Leon Guerrero has run several times. He is running once again. And Sam Mabini Young. You might remember she, of course, ran KGTF, the public access uh, station, public broadcasting on Guam. Dr. Sam Mabini, I should say. Chris Duenas, of course, the minority leader. Currently, he is looking to make it in again. And Mana Silver Tyron. She was a former one-term senator. Mana looks to make it once again a former longtime uh, news journalist in our neck of the woods. Bistro Mindiola has also... Uh, filed her paperwork, as has David Chrysostomo, Vincent Borja, and former Senator Jesse Lujan has also indicated that he will be running. Uh, Joanne Brown is an incumbent. She will be running, as well as Frank Bloss Jr. And Michelle Hope Titano, she has served in many capacities in island leadership, most recently as part of the parole board. As far as the congressional delegates, with uh, Michael St. Nicholas, once again, he's over an hour right now. The live stream continues on our Facebook page where he is addressing the um, outcome of the ethics investigation. His seat will be vacated, hoping to fill it, will be Talina Nelson and Dr. Judy Wanpat, a former senator and former speaker herself. From the Republican side, current Senator James Moylan is running and hoping to secure your endorsement to have a seat in Washington. For the Attorney General race, the incumbent, of course, in this nonpartisan race, of course, leaving Camacho and Doug Moylan. They have filed, now remember, uh, there has been some speculation, a lot buzzing on social media, that there, that there may be a third candidate 
Um, but right now, as of the as of this current moment, we're at about lunchtime here. Incumbent Levin Camacho and Doug Moylan, who Doug was the first elected attorney general for Guam several years ago, they have been the only two candidates who have filed for the attorney general. Uh, the deadline to file is five o'clock. Okay, so now, whew, that's a lot. And, and here now, with everything you need to know about the mechanics of it, the deadlines, the one and only Maria Pangolin. Maria, half a day. Half a day, Jason. It is Dallas. so good to see you. It's so good to be here again. We've talked to you a kajillion times, but this is the first time we've actually seen you <laughs> in person. But I know this time of year, you and your staff working very, very hard. You've got a lot to do, a lot of calls to make, a lot of procedures to explain. So let's unpack with maybe the most obvious one. Uh, the most pressing deadline is 5 o'clock today if any citizen out there would like to run for public office. That's correct. And 5 o'clock uh, p.m. today also is the deadline. If um, the Guam Election Commission has notified you that you're still lacking signatures, mm. you're welcome to submit them up until 5 o'clock today. Okay, and how many signatures does one have to have to run? Is, <clears> is it the same number across the board, or does it vary it, depending uh, on the race? The, the only d difference uh, is the governor needs 500, mm -hmm. and the senators need 250. So 250 if yes. you're going to run for yes. senator. Yes. Okay. Um, is there a, a vetting process in addition to the number of signatures? Like, you know, do they do police clearance, maybe, you know, like a criminal records check and th things of that nature? <laughs> it's a little bit cumbersome for our senator, for our, con for all our candidates. Mm -hmm. They do have to pick up a police clearance, two court clearances, the uh, district court and the superior court clearance. Mm -hmm. Prior to filing. That's yes, part that's of their package. Correct. Yeah. Yes. And they have, when they come in, those uh, clearances cannot be more than 30 days old upon the date of filing. Mm -hmm. Then um, they, we have notaries at our office. So the documents that need to be notarized include the certification of qualifications. I certify that I'm qualified to run. Mm -hmm. um, the affidavit of non-conviction that I've never been convicted of a felony. Those two need to be notarized. And our notaries, they can be notarized right there at the, our office. Um, they also have to make sure that an organizational report, their campaign committee and uh, campaign finance, if they have anything to report, the organizational report needs to be filed. Their public official disclosure statement, that's their financial disclosure statement, their personal assets and liabilities and how much they make, mm -hmm. um, that comes with the packet. Um, and then they and regardless of what you do, like, you know, like you may run a business, you may be employed in, you know, uh, public sector, private sector, federal and everything like that has to be filed. Is this all a matter of public record? At no. all, the whole packet is okay. public record. So um, any, any citizen questioning or they're just curious or they want, they want to look into it, they can go and contact the GEC correct. for whatever yes. reason. Okay. Yes, they can okay. come and we'll show it to them. Okay. And we'll I, I do, them sign it. I'm sorry, Maria. I do want to say, because Maria actually just informed me this um, prior to this segment that, that although we did not have it on that, on that graphic, there were actually two more editions of uh, people that filed today. Actually three. 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 Oh. Okay. So in the morning was... This is why you're the best. You know all this <laughs> stuff. For, for, for today. Mm -hmm. So for today... Um, Daryl Barnett, Chris Malafunction filed, and then uh, Speaker Terlahi filed, mm. and then Mr. Roy Gamboa, I think he's still in the office, filing as we speak. Okay. Yeah, so we have three more. We don't know how many more to expect by five o'clock. Mm. Now, there is obviously, Maria, a strategy with this, and you know this better than anybody on the island of, you know, um, some people say, like, if, if you have a high-profile person like the Speaker, and you say, she maybe has publicized it, and or I'm just being hypothetical here. But if she says, "I'll be filing today, like at two o'clock," please join me. I would love to, you know, have my family and my friends and my supporters with me. Other candidates want to maybe like back off because they're like, "Okay, if the speaker is going to do it, you know, she's going to get like all all the shine, as they call it, like all the uh -huh. limelight." Uh, but you do expect a lot of like eleventh hour filers to come in. Um, hopefully not, Jason. Uh, we have. Uh, we're really, Tomorrow time, man. Eh? <laughs> oh, Jason, we're, we're already busy, you know, vetting the signatures. And we want to be able, we don't want to be, we don't want to keep the candidates in suspense. Mm -hmm. And so it takes a bit to vet those signatures. Okay. So we have to do it uh, in order as they come in. Is the roster considered locked as of five, 501 today? With, with in terms of voter registration, in or terms like of the with, voters, with the people who have registered, like or filed their packets. Um, yes. Okay. Yes. So, 
Um, and we're still, we are still finalizing the June list of voters too, mm -hmm. as we speak. So uh, we're working on the voter list uh, today. And so since I think April, our voter list, we cut off every month on the 25th of the month. Mm. So we've been, so as of last Saturday, we've been vetting those um, registrations, both from DMV, um, online registration, and uh, those from our volunteer registrars. Okay. So now we're obviously in a much better position as far as, you know, um, public safety and, you know, like a, with the coronavirus still being part of our life, but this is a much better situation than we were two years ago. <laughs> um, how many people do you, can you account for now that are registered to vote? And, um, and we expect this to be a very participatory election because it is a gubernatorial election and because of, you know, like, again, the high pro profile nature of several of the candidates. Yeah. So as of May 25th, we had 52,609 voters. Mm -hmm. um, we are finalizing, like I said, our June list. So we're, we hope to climb back up. Most of our new registrants are coming from motor voter registration. Mm -hmm. So, you know, sometimes it's in the hundreds. Sometimes it's even up to over a thousand in one month. Mm -hmm. Okay, and for people watching at home who cannot get enough of this stuff, and I know there are many of you out there, <laughs> if you're filling out your calendar and like planning ahead, right? Google Calendar, what have you. Um, what are some of the most important dates that people really need to, to keep in the back of their mind of things coming up? For the voter, mm -hmm. um, come July 28th, we'll start early voting. So from July 28th until August 19th, we will open the Early Vote Center down at Western Resort Guam. At the Early Vote Center at the Western Resort Guam, you can come down between 10 o'clock to 6 o'clock, Tuesday through Friday. And that's starting July 28th up until August 19th. Mm -hmm. On Saturdays, we're going to go do village outreach. So on July 30th, we'll be at Okudu High School um, from 10 o'clock to 3 o'clock. Anybody from any village, any voter from any village can come to all our voters, uh, all our uh, village satellite uh, outreach programs. So even if, I'm, if I don't live around the, around the street from, from Ukudu, I may live in Fern Terrace and everything. It's okay if I stay in Barragada, I can still come over there and yes. I can still participate. Yes, from 10 o'clock to 3 o'clock mm -hmm. at Ukudu, that's July 30th. On August 6th, we will be at the University of Guam Fieldhouse, again from 10 o'clock to 3 o'clock. And if you like the leisurely drive all the way down to Malesso, that's... Why August. would you not? That's I a know. beautiful place. August 13th. Mm. So August 13th, we will be at, I think, Maritza Martyrs Elementary School, or is it Malesso Martyrs Elementary School? Probably say Malesso. <laughs> So again, just to be respectful, right? Okay, <laughs> ten to three. Okay. Okay. Yes, and so all you would need is your ID, a, a, a validly issued ID, mm -hmm. which means you can come with an expired ID. It was issued validly, so you can use even an expired ID. Okay, whose idea was it, Maria, to do these these voter registrations, like you know, like at the West End, and you said like with the um, very uncommon. Uh, places to, places to register or participate in the election process, and I, I say that you know with utmost respect because I mean you guys are making it way more convenient, you know, even interesting. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, we try. Yeah. Well, the Western Resort is the early vote center came up because we have to go through the government of Guam procurement mm -hmm. process, and they just came in the most responsive and the lowest bidder, so that's where we're at mm -hmm. with that. Um, Oh, one more thing, Jason, I sure. want to I want to mention and I want to stress. We will have accessible voting. Okay, we will not have curbside voting. Okay. And we've changed the name a bit to accessible voting to stress the fact that people who are able to walk into the mezzanine level of the Western Resort, our early vote center, should do that accessible voting would be available only for those with persons those persons with disabilities mm -hmm. and of course the manamku who cannot walk into the mezzanine level mm -hmm. if you decide to walk into our early vote center you will have the opportunity to use the universal express vote machine if you remember that yep. it's a ballot marking device and what it is is it it's not a voting uh, machine it's simply 
it'll simply mark up your ballot. You'll see it. You get a hard copy of it and you'll seal it in your ballot envelope. Your ballot envelope you'll seal in your affidavit envelope and then you can place it with us and we'll keep it for safekeeping until the election day. You guys are just making it so easy to get to participate in the voting process. Uh, okay, final question, because I got to let you go. Um, how many elections have you been involved in now? Since 2012, so you count. Has it been that long we've been working together? Yes, yes. Uh, I'm, it's been a I'm, pleasure. I'm celebrating my 11th year. Uh, I'm going go. into my 11th year. Well, Thank you, you. You have been a wonderful executive director. I know this is one of many interviews we're going to do as the election season goes on. So, Maria, best to you. Sisus Masi. How good, Mas, Jason Salas. Sisus Masi. All right. She also makes incredible tatizas, everybody. This I know from personal experience. So, that's Maria Pangilinan with the Guam Election Commission. Please stay tuned. There is much more coming up on Hotspot. Bye-bye.